What if we want to build a 16 input multiplexer? Well, we do it from two 8 input multiplexers. You see on the diagram here we have one multiplexer up here with 8 inputs, and we have another multiplexer down here with 8 inputs. Our address lines are 4 in number, because 2 to the 4th is 16. With these four address lines we will select any one of the 16 inputs to be presented to the output. We number the inputs D0 through D15. Now, when we look at this, there's a couple of new things on the screen. First of all, this is what Logisim calls a splitter, although it's really not splitting. What is happening here is that there are three data lines coming in here. Each of these carries one bit, and they are being combined into a single line which has three bits on it. Remember from the previous multiplexer, it goes in as a single bus with three bits on it. This value here will show what the bits are going in. So if I turn the one on here, uh, Go to the right toggle, turn the 1 on here, you'll see that turns to a 1. Likewise, down here, it's also seeing the 1 from there. Now we go back to 0. If I turn this on, you'll see the, uh, see the various bits going on and off. So that tells us what's going into the multiplexer. All right, how does this work? Well, the three low-order bits are going, to go to, are going to go to both multiplexers. So if I turn on, well, I've got three lower-order bits, or 0. When the three low order bits are zero, that causes bit zero, input bit zero, to be presented at the output of the multiplexer. So I've got three zeros here, and they're going up into the multiplexer. So that's the address, the three bit address for the eight bit multiplexer. And that selects D0. And D0 is a one, so you see a one coming out of the multiplexer. That's as far as we'll go. Likewise, down here, the three bits the three initial bits of the address are going to this multiplexer and again you can see the value is 000, zero, zero and D8, the first input bit, is also presented at the output of the multiplexer. Alright, that's fine. It is this high order bit which determines which of the two multiplexers will go to the output. If the high order bit is zero it means the value in here is between, the value is between 0 and 7. That's 8 values. So if this is 0, the highest value you can have would be 7. And that would be this multiplexer. If this bit is 1, it means that these can go from 8 to 15. The maximum, the lowest value would be, would be 8, and the highest value would be 15. This bit is then used to turn on one or the other multiplexer. In the case where the bit is zero, we invert the bit and we assert a one into this AND. That means that the output of the multiplexer, if it's one, can make it to the final output. On the other hand, if the high order bit is zero, that means there's a zero going to this AND, and the output from this multiplexer cannot make it to the final output of the circuit. If, on the other hand, I turn this bit on, you'll see now this AND gate is firing, and it is, the, it is bit D8 which is actually presenting at the output. All right, And bit D0 is blocked. So whatever we want to pick down here, um, well, let's pick we got D7 established there. If I went to uh, I went to seven, and I go back to zero, you see the seven is being presented. That's because this uh, that's a value of seven, and this is zero. This causes this multiplexer to be selected, so it is the output of this multiplexer which makes it to the final output. This multiplexer, because it's got a zero on the AND, cannot send its output. Well, there's its output. Um, it would be the equivalent output, but it's not making it through. So this bit, the high order bit, is used to select which multiplexer. And we can make increasingly larger multiplexers by playing the same trick. If we wanted to go to a 32-bit multiplexer, we would have five bits here, and the two high order bits would have to go through an array of ands in order to, to select which of the multiplexers would be would make their output to the final output. In the case of a 32-bit multiplexer, we would um, we'd be, it'd be made of four 8-bit multiplexers, giving us the total of 32 bits. That's done quite often where you will use the high-order bits 
to select the sub circuit that is actually going to give the result.